Greetings, welcome to Bullamatari's Paint Club. It is the 5th of July, 2021. It is episode 26, and I am joined today by the wonderful Badger. How are you, sir? Greetings. I'm pretty good today. Excellent stuff. How, well, what are you painting today? Uh, today I will be painting some more of the... Age of Sigmar Night Haunts, I believe these are called Grim Ghast Grave Guards. Uh, just big old boys with big old scythes right Sexy. there. Yeah, I'm going to be painting, um, well, I'm going to be trying to paint an entire Cadian Shock Troop squad, which I sort of started last week. <clears throat> but um, in, in midweek, I actually painted a model that mm. wasn't on stream. The horror. I did this boy. Good old Imperial Fist. Yeah, hang on a second, I just need to make sure that I've got... Whoop, there we go. One sweet fisty boy. Yeah, man. I mean, it was undercoated in black, and it's very clear to see that it was undercoated in black, but I was just basically testing the waters. I'll probably put another coat over that at some point, but... Yeah. Pretty good. I am quite, quite like how that came out. <clears throat> so without further ado, let us paint some Warhammer. Indeed. Right, I've got everything I need, I hope. <laughs> you know there's going to be something I'll forget, but... You'll be like, ah, oh, damn it, I forgot this cover, where is it? And it'll be like <laughs> all the way across the room. And like, yeah. Oh. Ah, there was something I forgot, but I know where that is. It's there. It's within reach, so that's fine. Let me palette. <clears throat> palette. Mm, palette. So, how's your week been, sir? My week has been somewhat interesting, Mr. Dave. Somewhat interesting. Go ahead. Talk to us about this. Well, for once, the week was actually busy, like, busy again. But mm. in, in, in a strange way, we, we did do, like, a lot of overtime and all that stuff, but it wasn't, like, forced. Yeah. It was just sort of, like, something, some little bits and pieces were happening. Either we were waiting for the computers to finish up or... Mm. Or we were just waiting for some agars to dry, so it wasn't like a rushed overtime kind of thing. But mm. yeah. it was like someone needed to be there to just man the, man the ship. The man the ship for the last bit before getting bought. That yeah. is not the most. That's the not the most interesting thing that happened with me during this week. Oh uh, yeah. The, mo the most interesting thing happened with me during this week on on the Tuesday when. I received a magical letter of uh, one of my managers telling me that I was due for a uh, a disciplinary meeting. Mm. Because of all the times that I was off sick in a short period of time. So motherfucking policies. I'll be going I'll be going through that on Well that sucks no. that sucks the largest dick in the world. Ah, it's all good. Is it though? Well, it's it's essentially just a talk at the minute. Yeah, so by the, I suppose by the way, it's, it's a policy and procedure thing, I guess, probably, but it's still very shitty of them. Nah, at least they actually give us some time to, you know, read through the things that they give us. Every organisation does that. They should. I mean, you'd you'd think that you know, especially during this t period of time that we are in, mentioning no names, um, that the organisations would get sort of you know slightly more lenient about these sorts of things. Nah, not gonna happen. <sighs> but I, but I already sort of have have what I'm gonna counter most of their arguments with. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're sick, you're sick. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, that, that's the thing. I've, I've got, like, a, a generally stunning track record of not being ill. Yeah. So... And I'm sure you've got all your, you know, your doctor's notes and shit if you've uh, needed them. All that sort of stuff. Anyway, they're not, you know... They couldn't possibly do without you there, so... I think you're safe. 
Oh, I know that. At the end of the day, if they do, if they end up suspending, that's more time off for you. <laughs> not if it, not if the suspension is permanent. Well, it's not going to be permanent because they have to. They basically this will just be a kickoff meeting, just saying like some like it'll be like a stage one or something. Yeah, like, it it it'll it just be a formal the, warning. It 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 pretty much is if they get the actually turning it into a formal warning because we have like a tier system yeah so tier one is sort of like the watch list and then kind of just end up leaving the watch list after like a short period of time without yeah. any further incidents so no I, just, may, I hate the bullshit they... where they say oh my hands are tied by policy and you're like fuck off no they're not you could, you can do what you want. You could recommend that like this doesn't happen. <laughs> that would be logical. Mm. Yeah, so uh that sounds shitty, man. Take into account that people are actually humans and not robots. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a shitty week, man. Uh, we'll see what it starts off like. Yeah. My week has been considerably better than that. I would Good. say. I got my second jab, so I'm safe. What's that one? Well, I'll be safe in a couple more weeks, I think. Once it's had time to uh, to kick in. Once it's had time to upload you, all your real information to the government. Or so they say. <laughs> oh, hilarious. The army don't even have GPS technology that can track their own bloody forces. What what makes us think that they've got like nanotechnology that's small enough to actually, you know, track mm. our um, activity? All I all I think of is like all of the sort of pseudo memes where it's like some guy taking a photograph out of a, a plane's window and it's like absolutely perfect sunset <laughs> and cloud formations and things like that. And then it's like, here's a picture from, you know, an F-14 fighter, like a 27 million F-40 fighter jet bombing some guy from like 50 miles away. And it's like the fuzziest image ever that yeah. could possibly maybe be a van. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the amount of cases of like almost friendly fire um, it's like even in like yeah the the Iraq War and Afghanistan yeah. and that, like they couldn't identify what a unit were you know who a unit was, so they nearly mortared them. And you're like, oh, that's that's. Um... So we're gonna we're gonna call first because we have you know the communications. We're gonna say, yo, dudes, is there anyone in this area? Well, that, that, that's the goes, thing. No. Then you blow them up. Oh, no, God. That's the thing. They don't have the communications. The, like the communic yeah, the, the 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 technology failed, and they couldn't identify who they were. So, yeah, I don't think that they've got na nanotechnology that can track where you are and what you do. Another less militaristic version of the meme is all the photographs of galaxies from the Hubble Space Telescope, which is like, was it, at least. 20 30 years old yeah and it's like showing like these perfect like quasars and things like that and then it's just got cctv camera of some guy nicking from greg's and it's like <laughs> super fuzzy it's like mm, really yeah couldn't make better tv like cctv <laughs> oh man so yeah it has been a a week of two halves i guess for for, for us too mm. I carried on yesterday with me stream off um, Vampire Masquerade, Bloodlines. That was a really nice stream. I saw you get shot in the face. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it, was, it was like, he's having a good time, he's having a good time, he's having a good time. Oh, fuck! <laughs> and then on uh, on Saturday, we completed Ape Escape 3, which means... Oh, still got the overlay up. Oh, shit. So sorry. I, I must oh, have clicked no. the wrong thing. Whoops. Thanks, thanks, Phil. We've just been talking. Oh, to be honest, I've got my thing set on chat only, so yeah. I didn't even notice it. Oh, well. I think we'll cut into it here. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Bulletin's Paint Club. <laughs> I did a quite quite, uh, quite good um, intro there as well, so 
it never mind. S- smooth and without any incident of only yeah. we had no. <laughs> I am painting some Imperial Guard, just a, a normal shock tr- uh, troop squad. And Mr. Badger, you are painting some uh, Age of Sigmar. Uh, yes, I am painting Age of Sigmar spooky boys. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, I've got two screens. Like, I could literally see it there. How the hell did I miss that? Meh. Anyway, so let's go on to the fucking news. Jeff Bezos is stepping down as Amazon boss. Now, I had seen that a while back that he was contemplating it. Yeah, well, he has done it. He's finally gone, has he? Yeah, he has gone. It's not like he's going to be... Out of pocket. No, he for the rest of his existence. No, he never needs to. Uh, he he can he can probably give several billion pounds a year to charities every year and not have to make a single penny, and still live extremely comfortably. Just off the interest alone. Exactly. Nobody should ever be able to get that that wealthy. His existence, his mere existence is a crime in my eyes. But that's just me. Yeah, it's capitalism. Yeah, fucking capitalism. Anyway, thanks for joining us, Snoo Glyphon. How are you today? Hope you are well. Are you painting along with us today? Obviously, I know you you, you might not have your... uh, you set up set up properly so you can still be painting on chat. If so, what are you painting? I would reckon probably them all. I don't know, if not man. Sisters of Battle. I was going to say, he's been on the Sisters of Battle lately. He's, he's been on the Sisters lately. Mm, sister, sister. Right. Just trying to get this undercoat done. Well, it's base coat even. Undercoat's a different thing completely. Mm, indeed. We're getting the first layers on, good set. Yes. But yeah, um, what I was saying, um, we completed Apescape 3. Which is which means that I've completed every Ape Escape game that isn't a terrible on rails PlayStation move demo um, I may have to get myself PlayStation move just to say that I've done I've done the full set um, but I can't be asked right now and to be honest that Ape Escape trilogy is probably the only ones I'd count as main games it's good games yeah so that series is complete uh, we had some ups and downs on it there was lots of uh and plenty of roundabouts. Yeah, there was well there was one roundabout which I got annoyed at. Um yeah, there was there was frustration, there was laughs, it was just a nice chill game. There was casual sexism. There, probably there, horrific lampooning. Yeah, there was casual sexism, casual racism, casual homophobia. There was all of the things. I'm gonna get myself a little highlights video built at some point in the next couple of days. And then I'll probably end up doing a full review video on YouTube. And I'll probably upload that on here as well. But the uh, yeah, the highlights video is going to be fun. Probably just be a few minutes of daftness. Oh yes. Yeah, I've got I've got ideas on how how to explain the the review, but my my sort of. Off the top of my head, review would be it's um, the first one was a bit janky, as you know you'd expect from basically a tech demo. Brand new IP essentially. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a brand new IP, and it was also released alongside the uh, first analog controller, and it was the first, it basically it was the game that demonstrated what the analog con- yeah the the analog sticks could do. It was the tech demo. It was like. Yeah, this is this is the new thing. This is the new controller that we want you to use. This is how to use it. And somehow it actually got through. 
Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, and it was, but you know, it was it was alarmingly good. Given it was just a tech demo, in fact, it was so good it justified um, two sequels. And I really enjoy the game. It's. It was always a um, like I, f I think I had the the demo on a demo disc uh, when I was a kid, but I never actually owned the games. So when like you know, obviously when I get the opportunity to to buy it as an adult, I'm gonna do that. You were like, yeah, boy. Yeah, it was always something that like, I always played the the uh, the demo, just like, wow, this is amazing, and I've always wanted the game, and now uh, yeah, so it's. I'm so happy I did it, and I'm just I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of sad it's over because it's like, you know, 12, 13 weeks of my life I've spent playing Ape Escape. It's almost the end of an era. The mini games were really good, like so some of them were a bit more hit and miss than others, but the mini games on Ape Escape were really good. The Give it a bit of time, and you'll get back to the uh, the Monkey Gear Solid. Yeah, maybe. If someone wants to make me do that as a as a as a full let's play, we'll see exactly <laughs> how long it is. Because I only did the first level on the uh, on the stream. I wonder if it's like a it is like a true like beat for beat remake of the whole game. <laughs> it needs a save file uh, of its own, so I'm, I'm thinking it might be quite long. Yeah, okay could potentially just be so enormous. <laughs> I think it's called Metal Gear Solid and I'm not sure I'm not sure what the word metal is. It's probably a type of ape or some description. You know, just to complete the uh, monkey pawn. <clears throat> so yeah, what else is happening this uh, this week? Uh, Kotaku has announced uh, well, has uh, reported that Japan is getting its own license to make a Star Wars anime. Ooh. So, some Star Wars anime is is coming apparently, an anthology of Star Wars anime. I'd ex I'd expect it to kind of be like almost like Castlevania. Yeah. Sort of style, you know, the the whole Netflix animaker, but in obviously in the Star Wars universe and all that stuff. I mean, the, this screenshot here looks like it's um, Samurai Jedi, which looks interesting. So that'll be fun to look at. Then they instantly lampoon it. Because <laughs> that's just what anime does. Yeah. Instant lampoon. But it'll be amazing. Is that it licensed to take the piss out of it? <laughs> it'll be a spectacle, is what it'll be. Can grab a drink? Yeah, so that's f that. That'll be fun. What kind? Yeah, here's a question. Here's a question. What Star Wars thing? would you like to see more than anything else that doesn't already exist? It could be any type of media or product. Well, the thing, there's a lot of things that actually exist. Like, there's practically almost everything exists with something Star Wars, be it video game, music, yeah. or, or films. I think what I'd be more inclined to see, and I'm pretty sure that we have mentioned this on a previous thing, we, when it comes to other game things, yeah. is the like a more of a survival horror thing. Okay. Because there are essentially a great deal of things in the Star Wars universe itself. Mm -hmm. Which which are horrifically scary as shit. Yeah. Um, if you have, if anybody has looked into some of the spookier parts of Star Wars, you will know that the the Empire 
actually created its own sort of zombie plague. Huh. And they they really had to like burn everything to stop it. Wow. Because uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it is. Um, but there, there's like a lot of comics and stories about it. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can potentially look up those comics and stories. And if they did have some kind of survivally horror game, they could easily set it with that particular background. Yeah. Thing. I mean, I'm up for that. Sign me up. I mean, you wouldn't even need to have, like, Jedi in it either. Yeah. I mean, I know that's like a big staple for the whole bloody Star well, I mean, Wars crew just... to have Jedi in it. But if if you think about all of the fighter games, like X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter and that, they're, they're like super popular and they didn't have Jedi in Yeah, I mean, you, you just look at the uh, the Mandalorian. Yep. There's only like a Jedi in like a couple of episodes and that's it. And uh, there are actually... Uh, um, I would say that there's some mild horror elements in the Mandalorian in certain episodes. I mean, there was a there was a whole episode where he was crash landed in a, on an ice world and was a, like, and he uh, upset a uh, a spider egg colony. So he's having to dodge those for God knows how long. Yeah, to survive that shit. That was a that was a good episode. Spoiler alert. A bit late. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's, that's like I said always. Wait a second. That's the biggest horror. Yeah. For everybody. <laughs> Whoops. It's all good. Yeah. It's not like you went into great detail to describe the entire thing. Oh no, no. And also, I didn't tell you what, uh, how it ended. So. There you go. Lorian dies. <laughs> Season over. Yeah. I I would quite like to see a um a film or series like that explored the uh the Sith more. Like a sort of you know how they've got the, the Venom films and that? Yeah. Let's like, have it's sort of like an evil side of things. Yeah. Of. I wanna see I wanna see the um the Suicide Squad of Star Wars. Isn't that the... Oh, I think it's like... I think they've got like a real bad company sort of CGI animated thing. I don't want to see animated. Uh, where though. it's... It's it's like a... It's like a bunch of stormtroopers. <clears throat> yeah, the Bad Batch, um, I think they called it, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Um, it, I don't, it's I, essentially I don't, the whole... I don't want to see it animated. I want to see like a, a full feature film where... It's... It can even be like, you know, how Anakin became Vader or something. I don't know. <clears throat> Just something well, that explores more the Sith side. There are a lot of, like, Sith in in the lore well before Palpatine and all that. Yeah. You have really, really interesting stories. Give us some of that. And, and the way that they go out of their way. Most of them aren't, like... They, they don't start off like super evil. Mm. Some of them just, you know, are just, well, they're assholes, of course. Yeah. But they're, they're not like evil. They just enjoy indulging in their desires, mm. which is what allows them to access the dark side a bit more because it, they just have that lust for power. And that lust for power speaks to the dark side of the force. Whereas Ooh, it's. Shake, shake. Whereas it's seems like the uh the lawful side of you know the jedi side of things is all you know order balance and essentially moderation hmm. the dark side of the force tends to be instinct desire and just that sort of yeah animalistic part of you that says i i want more i need more i have to have more Give me more, more, more. 
So that it's like the the corrupting force of the universe. Yes. Right, I need to... The sergeant head is here. If, if we do get back to some of, like, the the other law, I mean, I, I think there's, there is, like, a big separation between the movie law yeah. and the expanded universe law. And the expanded universe is way, way more interesting than some of the movie law. Yeah. Because because the expanded universe also has it's got that zombie plague in yeah. there. It's got essentially the center of the universe where the the light side of the force and the dark side of the force essentially originated. And within that area is one of the most terrifying creatures in all of the Star Wars franchise. It is uh, a a being which took into itself both the dark and the light side of the force and essentially became an almost elder god strength destructive being oh, that damn. is practically unkillable but not uncontainable which is and they've managed they actually keep it contained by a series of space stations which create singularities huh. essentially they keep it locked up by surrounding it with black holes wow there you go in one of the stories it actually breaks one of the stations and gets out for a little bit and it pretty much takes like all the sith and the and like Luke Skywalker when he becomes super badass ultra Jedi to put it back in its box essentially yeah well, fuck so you, even the Sith kind of go you know what we like power and we want to take over the universe but even this thing scares the shit out of us so <laughs> um, let's, ju let's just let's just stop slapping each other for a moment and deal with it please yeah Holy damn. I only need one Vox cast ahead. I'm going to have two two guys with the helmets coming off. And once again, this is this is all down to a case that I know this because I I watch like tons and tons of little law videos in the wee early hours of the the morning <laughs> when when sleep escapes me. You're a nocturnal being, aren't you, Badger? I, I am a nocturnal creature. <laughs> right. Done the skin. Well, the skin on the uh, on the heads, anyway. So it's, it's, it's a case of if you want to know a little bit more, just start looking up some uh, some more videos on the YouTube. Aye. They will eventually lead you to some of the more interesting aspects of the universes that you so like to enjoy in films. And you um, might ruin it for yourself by finding out that the, the, the lore behind it is actually a lot cooler than what you've seen. Well, yes, there, there are a lot of instances like that where there is a really spectacular bit of the lore. Aye. Uh, but then again... There's also the whole case of, since these are the expanded universes, <coughs> not a, there's the big fight between people saying, oh, this is not canon. Oh, this is canon. And it's like, look, guys, you it's either give your universe flavour or you keep it locked in a box. Which is it? Yeah. Right, I'm going to do the hands now. And on the same aspect of this kind of thing, this is why... 40k is 100 times better than Star Wars. Start that fight. Throw that match into the fucking petrol. I mean, there's no, there's no argument. It is. We, we know this. There are some inconsistencies, I will admit. But otherwise, it's just better. Yeah, it's all flavour, boy. Flavour, flav. Including the particularly horrific things. Yes. Like servitors and exterminators. 
and how essentially the entire human race treats itself like garbage. Pretty much. Oh, fuck. Doing very careful now. Hmm. Another thing I saw in the news, uh, apparently at the moment, um, American troops are leaving Afghanistan. Yes, they're and pulling out. Apparently the, Na the NATO troops are leaving behind Pokemon. Fabulous. <laughs> so... As the last major deployments of American and NATO troops prepared to leave Afghanistan, one of the most important milestones in their departure was the closing of the um, last week of uh, Bagram Airfield, one of the largest military bases. <laughs> that is essentially yeah. the last place that they come out. Yeah. Bagram was the home to several Pokemon Go gyms and loads of Pokemon Go players, meaning many young men and women uh, stuck overseas and... <laughs> <laughs> so they've basically oh, left a shitload of Pokemon. It's like, no. <laughs> Leave them behind. No Pokemon left behind. Excellent. I love it. Yeah. Right. I'm going to see if I can get four of these done today, at least. Unlike last week where I only ended up really getting... One critter done. Yeah. <clears throat> then again, I had basically just only had the the glaives left to work with. Hi. Yeah, you're pretty. You were pretty much done when when we finished, though, because I mean, it, it didn't. It didn't take long for a picture to arrive of of the finished article. Well, I already had one of them finished, so yeah. that's that's where that one came from. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, there was like ten others, Dave. Yeah. But true, they didn't take as long to actually get you another picture of those. Have to wait till the next day, but... Yeah. It's not bad, that. Yeah, I've, um, I was playing uh, some... I've played a couple of games this week that I just want to briefly talk about. Um, first one I want to talk about is Tetris Effect, which is absolutely fucking great. It's basically, all right. Imagine Tetris mixed with Bejeweled. It's basically a nice Zen Tetris game, and it's really nice. It's got some really lovely audio-visual um, design. And you go through different stages, and each stage um, has different sort of music effects and visual effects behind it. Uh, every time you hit a button, basically, the, the sound and visual design sort of pops at you. It does... It off with a sparkle. Yeah, and you know, like for example, like one of the uh, parts is like a uh, Japanese like kendo drumming sort of design, and every time you rotate a, a thing, it does a uh, like a, a like a low. It does uh, the drum beat? Does a drum beat, and when you do the um, when you, you know when you when you force it down, uh, when you're happy with where it's going to go, and you, you you push it down to the bottom, it does a bit you know, a deeper boom, and it's. Uh, it's really nice. Um, I've only played a few levels of it, but it's uh, probably going to go uh, have a go at that at some point. Probably when the video is rendered tonight. Just a nice mm -hmm. Zen Tetris puzzle game. Just chill out, relax. Yeah, a lot more Zen than the um, than the Tetris game that I saw Richard uh, streaming the other day. The one v essentially one v one hundred. Yeah, Tetris 99. Yeah, it's a lot more zen than that. Well, yeah, because you've got to fight against it somehow. <laughs> you've just got to yeah. panic place and hope for the best. Um, the other thing I've, uh, I want to mention is uh, basically what I've decided is going to be my... Um, if, I, if I get to 100 um, followers, 
what my one 100 follower stream is going to be. Nice. I played, I had a little go at running um, Flight Simulator in, um, you know, nice high graphics now that I've actually got a computer that will run it. And it is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. Of course, because they're, they're, when it comes to those kind of flight sim games, like the actual Microsoft flight sim games, they do put a lot of effort into recreating areas faithfully. It, they haven't recreated an area. They've recreated the whole world. Literally, an AI has gone through Google Maps of the whole world and has built the map which has then been sort of, um, you know, just, uh, that's, you know, it, it's had a bit of oversight in certain areas to, like, make Overlaid sure that it's on. accurate. So Essentially, it built the world and then went to the, the developers themselves who fixed any inconsistencies. Yeah, basically. Like, the bigger cities have got, um, I've had people, like, looking at them and stuff. Certain, like, big airports have... Uh, have made sure that... All the designs are up to date, and they've they've included like any new construction work that's gone on. Yeah, exactly. And I have to say, I did a flight last night um, from uh, Liverpool John Lennon Airport to RAF Valley in um, what's his name in Anglesey, um, and I flew over Bangor, and I could recognise it from the sky at night. I could recognise it from the sky. As the yellow pub. No, I, I actually saw um, the um, oh, what's it called? The one next to the um, to the uh, pier. Oh, what's it called? That pub. Maybe, tap uh, and spile. Tap and spile. Yeah, I, I saw the tap and spile. I was like, fuck. Yeah. Um. The only difficulty... You fly into it, just go in there for a pint. I don't think you could do that, somehow. Fly straight into the building. Yeah. Um, the only difficulty, other than the fact that I haven't done the tutorial, so I didn't know how to land, so I ended up crashing. Well, I didn't end up crashing. I ended up overstressing the plane, and the game said game over. Um... <laughs> Essentially, you blew up in midair. Yeah, basically, a wing must have come off. And uh, it was like, rather than seeing yourself die... We're just going to end it here. <laughs> to, you know, save not only your pride and your dignity, but also the horrific horrors of the deaths of however many people were on your aircraft. It was but only me. <laughs> it was a light air aircraft. But yeah, the, the difficulty for me is um, the only time I can really play it is um, like in the evenings, and mm. it's got a proper sort of day-night cycle. Like... It, it's so essentially what... every time you fly it'll be dark yeah essentially um so that that's a bit of a bummer really um right, it's something I'll, I'll, I'll need to dedicate some time to it but basically yeah when um when it comes to if i get to 100 follows at any point i'm going to do a boost control in the air and I'm going, and I'm going to call it, "Come Fly with Mead." Oh, yes. I appreciate <laughs> that wholeheartedly. Yeah, so it's 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 going to be a fun stream, and I'll do a a couple of little journeys, have a look at Liverpool Town Centre, and fly over to Manchester. And then I'll uh, open it up to the uh, to the floor and see where people want me to fly around next. You can see that turning into a interesting request. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go over Area Fifty One. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, those are the games I've been playing mostly. Um, on Elite Dangerous, I've also should mention this. I have got enough uh, credits to get a um take 10 nope even more the uh freighter what's it called not not the imperial one the uh what's it called the alliance yeah the alliance. heavy is is the the type 10 
No, not the you've Alliance. Got the, you've got the type. Well, the most expensive one is 200 mil, and that is the... That's the Imperial... The, yeah, I believe it's the Imperial Cutter. Yeah, the Imperial Cutter. The, what's the cruiser? It's the, the third big one. The middle right, one. The, the, well, the, the, there's not really, like, a middle set of them. There's You've got the... There are the most expensive ships in the game, which are the top tier ships. You mm -hmm. have the Cutter, you've got the, the Type 10 Heavy, and then you've got the Federation Cruiser. Yeah, the Federal one. Yeah, that's, that's the Fed Cruiser. Yeah, and I've got enough money to get that, and that's the one I'm going. Basically, it looks like a big fat anaconda. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what it is. That's the uh, one I'm you, getting. You need to get yourself allied. Already the, am. The Federation. The Federation... No. Already am, dude. I, I mean, I'm, I'm flying around Federation space doing all sorts. Oh, so, you've probably so done a lot. I've already got the reputation needed, I think. Um, I don't know whether they're going to need me to go on a mission, uh, like a quest line or anything. I think, but... Right. What, what you'll have to do is during the. Since you've joined the Federation. I haven't, have I haven't joined do... anything yet. Uh, the What you need to do. Is join the federation to to raise your rank. Is you pledge allegiance to one of the the major NPC characters okay. of of the faction. Uh, hello there, dead gamer. Greetings. Oh, hello, daddy. How are you? Just you. You join. You set set a pledge to one of the characters, um, and then you complete like faction missions, yeah. which essentially turn into either go to these war zones, pick some dick. Or transfer supplies to areas that need them and as you transfer the supplies to areas that need them you'll click you'll start earning proper faction rank yeah. and faction tickets as well which will allow you to get stuff and those will raise your rank within the factions okay. so you know you know how some of the ships say that you need to be like a baron of the imperium before you can even consider buying them okay or like an admiral of the federation. That that's where you get that those uh, levels of like respect yeah. and things like that. So you essentially you need to sh like sign up with X, Y, or Z, and then spend the time doing the faction. Okay, so I'm, I'm... the faction control missions in order to raise your rank, and then once you've raised your rank, then you can buy the ship. Yeah, so I've got the money, but I don't have the. Uh... It just means that once you reach that stage, the way you can actually buy it, because you have the rank, you'll have even more money, which means you'll be able to replace it when you get blown the fuck up. Yeah. So that's good. Anyway, Daddy, how are you so? We were just in the middle of talking about... Uh, about so Eve, uh, Elite Dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah, not Eve Online. I keep, I keep making that mistake. It's because it's so close. Yeah. And he's just popping in to say hi before he does stuff with kids. Excellent. Hope you have fun. Yes. We'll have to get an update on where you, where the uh, little ones' armies are up to. I hope they uh, they've had plenty of painting time. Hobby time is nice. Hobby time is chill time. Hobby time is best time. Yes. That's why we do this with our nice chill classical music on which we've fight, which we've got now. Last week was a bit of a uh, a mess. A little bit, yeah, because I didn't have any uh, any camera heart, uh, software or anything to uh, to zoom in or anything. I definitely know what I need to do with these guys at the minute. They are so awkward. And they're stuck together. <laughs> Especially these ones, because they're very, very... Wispy, I should say. Very wispy. Wispy. As in... I'm gonna give, if you look at this bad boy right here, yeah. see where he is a, attached to the base? Yeah. By this one singular boing. And they just boing. Just twangs. They're very top-heavy models, and they're all mounted on tiny, tiny points. Mm. 
Yeah, that's a pain. Right, I think that's all the skin on all of these models done. So I think we will move on to the mechanic of standard grey. Unless I want to do the boots first, which might actually be the way to go. Speaking of skin, that's on. Oh, actually, no, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the cloth done first. Oh! Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh no. Oh no, you didn't. Right, so I'm going to start having a little dry brush. Oh shit, that load wasn't on properly, I don't think. Don't mind. As long as you didn't shake it. It's fine, the, uh, it's, it's a dry brush anyway, so it's, al it's already like a, a solid paste. Mm. Well, that's the way it should be. Gonna have to get myself some uh, some new space rain models. Oh no! Just take a, just take a look at what they have. <laughs> okay. I don't think I cleaned this brush well enough last time I used it, and I think I used it last time for me um, Imperial fists because so everything's uh, gone yellow. Uh, is that is it that one? It's got a sort of it's gone a little bit green. Mm. Right, okay. This paint, this brush is is out of use right now. So just gotta wash it a bit. Yeah. Uh, give it a. Ooh, they're releasing uh, guardsmen with female officers. The female. Uh, yeah, really. they they have female the the newest guard. Imperial Guard box set, essentially yeah. for the for the Cadian shock troops. It's got a whole new rack of head options and body options, I believe. Nice. Um, and you get you get guys with mustaches, you get guys with <gasps> books and things like that. Oh yeah. Um, oh fucking you, it's, it's essentially it's essentially a redo of the, the ten man infantry box set, and it's just got more options in it. Damn son, I'm gonna have to buy some. I've still Probably got does. I've still got my standard Cadian command squad here. Not a command squad. You've got a command squad there, and I've got Oh man, I feel bad now. Well, I don't think they have like an updated command squad yet, so you would just have to buy a couple of um squads and then use the heads from the squads in order to Yeah. Polish things up. I'll probably just like um, build the new squads and then just intersperse them into me uh, me army normally. If you know what I mean, just like add a uh, couple, couple of dudes per per squad. Yeah, essentially, but build a squad, break the squad up, like like use all of the new parts for that squad. Yeah, and then just break the squad up into your older squads. Yeah, I know what you're talking about because I'm pretty sure I did that with some of my other squads um my veterans in particular yeah. i used all the the weird heads from the command sprue so the ones with the hats the ones with the mohawks the, the burnt guy um i essentially used all of those for my veterans the guy with the cigar <laughs> it's all good ow you okay, though, Dave? Ah, I've just got cramp in me shoulder. It's Reese. It's all Reet. It'll be all Reese on the neat. Try that off a little bit. Oh man, the, when I was buying the paints the other day, um, the guy in the shop um, was like trying to show me how to do dry brushing because I like voiced the opinion that I don't 
see the point in dry brushing. Mm, that, that's, that's where you went wrong, Dave. <laughs> voice and opinion. You, you voice an opinion in a shop that's primarily there to sell you all the things to do with the hobby that you're supposed yeah. to be doing. And I, and I just, I ended up saying to him, "Look, I, I know how to do it. I just, I just don't care. Yeah, I just, I just don't see enough of a, you know, an impact to justify, you know, a whole new set of paints." I can do the same thing if I'm very careful with the standard paints. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm currently doing some dry brushing now, and I honestly can't tell the difference. It's like, if, if, you, if your brush is dry enough, you can't tell. If your brush is too wet, it just ruins it. I just, I, I hate dry brushing with a passion. I only do it on the um, on the Imperial Guards because it's cloth, and cl you can get some decent effects off on cloth. Yeah, it's easier to do it on on those things than it is to do it on like plate armor and that. Yeah, because you're likely just to cover more area on the plate, and then it just doesn't highlight anything. It just yeah, it, it just it changes the color. <laughs> It's you, you, you don't want it to be. So I'm going to work on these four guys here, even though I've done all the cloth work on all eight of them. And to be honest, once I've actually done these eight, I'm very, very close to finishing this whole set. Nice. Is that your, your first commission done? Well, no, I've still got Death Guard to do, and all of the, um, the Storm Past Eternals. Aye. They weep slowly into my fucking hands. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, when it comes to these ones, I think after I've done these Night Haunts, everything else is a lot easier, because they're all big, chunky models, and I don't need to take my time essentially covering most of them these uh, as i've said constantly these are very wispy fine models mm -hmm. i have to be very very careful how i paint them because it's not a case of doing any annoyances to the paint job but it's very very easy to damage them because they have like really really thin Spindly limbs. Yeah. And they're all attached to like really fine, smoky, <laughs> wispy bits and that. It's just like, fuck's sake. <laughs> Pain in the arse. Right. What I am doing now is I am doing the Steel Legion Drab, which is uh, boots basically, mostly, apart from um, a couple of straps on each leg and the leather hol holster for the knives. For the knives. Yeah, you call that a knife. It's a spoon. So you played knife and spoon before then? Oh, man. Yeah, I'll focus on these four once I've done this fucking skin tone. Which isn't actually skin tone, really. It's It's just... Wraith bone white, washed with blue, and then dry brushed with pallid flesh. It's just spooky ghostly skin. Hmm. Oh, I've got one more. Oh, pain. I just looked at me, so I was like, wait, wait, there's only three here. <laughs> ah. Yeah, there's, a, there's only one more news article that I saw that I wanted to bring up today. And that is um, apparently Donald Trump's got his own social media now. Again, is that because everybody else has banned him off everything else? Yeah, so he he basically made his own. Um, Trump vision. Yeah, whatever, whatever they want to call it. Um, Tell me right up. I want to see that. Do can you guess what the internet has done with it? 
uh, completely memed it into non-existence? I mean, pretty much. But more specifically... Vidas. Um, No. People have been flooding Donald Trump's social media with Sonic the Hedgehog porn. Yes. See, I, I was just going to say dick pics. <laughs> but the, the internet has proved that it goes above and beyond time yeah. after time. Sonic the Hedgehog, furry smut, has gone up on Donald Trump's website and has been basically just drowning his uh, his site with with smut and it's brilliant and I love it. Sometimes the internet is a beautiful thing. This is one of those times. Most of the time, you look back and you go, "My God, <laughs> my God, what have we oh done?" Oh my God, smut pit. Yeah. So yeah, this fun. is this is like one of those points on a um, on like one of those graphs. Where everything lines up perfectly, <laughs> but like one one point on the entire graph, and it's just that's the crossover point between <laughs> absolute horror and absolute amazingness. Yeah, the Venn diagram meets here. Yeah, and everybody is happy for that briefest moment, Puff. and then it all turns back to hell. Yeah. The only person who's not happy about this is Donald Trump, who can't, basically can't tweet anything because his uh, tweets are lost in a sea of. Um, yeah. Dick. So that that's uh, that's what the internet's doing this week, and I love it for it. Glorious, glorious people. <laughs> uh, we find the most creative ways to, to. Fuck with yeah. each other. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do all of these um, these guardsmen in like one go, but the conveyor belt might not end up pumping anyone out tonight. It might just be a very almost painted sprue. Well, that's the thing. If it's an almost painted sprue, then you can pretty much stick them together. Off cam. I'm not doing because you have you you have well yeah you will have essentially painted the whole bunch of them on screen. You yeah. just but then have... sticking them together is the most satisfying bit. So I've got to got to leave it for next week if I, if that ends up happening. Oh. You hate you hate the way that I make things last weeks, don't you? It's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. God damn it! <laughs> it's like things that could be finished, and then you could start fresh. It's it, it's not. I don't mind it if you're like halfway through something, and then you've kind of got to go. Oh, I've got to do this next week. That's that seems fine to my brain, but this is the case of oh, I've got one thing to do, and essentially that one thing to do is like the most mediocre little bit. Either you've got to stick something together or you've got to just essentially do a bit of edge work or <laughs> wash something and then it's done it's like just do it off stream no just do the thing see I, I i actually find sticking models together more um gratifying than actually painting them if you know what, you know what i mean that's mm. that's the point when a final a finished product becomes visible because right now it's just plastic on a sheet that I'm just sort of colouring in. I didn't understand that, but yeah. And I, I'm sure that the stream don't want to just sit here watching me doing the boring bit for like hours on end, and then and then all of a sudden when it comes to the the good bit, I'll like, oh, I'll I'll do that off stream. I, I don't, I don't think stream. that's. Free. <laughs> Free. It's, uh, I will disagree to disagree with you. Okay. I mean, I just. Got... My... 
it's got as much as I do, as much as I do, enjoy the whole process of finally sticking things together and being like, oh, that really works. And, and, and enjoying it in a bit too much of a excitable fashion. If I've sat here and I've... Well, I, I, you've seen me. I, I kind of stick things together as I paint. Yeah. So it's, it's just down to a, a difference in in method. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like to get all of the base coat done before I start sticking. And... At the moment, that means getting all of these boots done, and then getting all the armor on, and then getting the stripes put on. I think it's just the fact that I've got quite a complicated um, paint scheme for my guardsmen. It just, it does take a long time to get them like stick ready. So many, so many steps before yeah. they are ready to even be considered. Because the tiger moving. stripes have basically added to my, I've added like two steps to the process. Just because I want like two colours worth of tiger stripes on. Yeah, and honestly, I I will have to admit that I am also responsible for that particular addition of steps because you you essentially came to me asking me what colours would be the best colours suited to it, and I was like, oh, this one and this one should be good. Yeah. So it's your fault. <laughs> you did this to me. Wasted by my own patrol. <laughs> I did it to myself. Oh man. Yeah, I definitely want to get hold of that um that new set of squads. Yes, well I was actually um the only reason I really know about it was because the the Warhammer stuff keeps popping up on the Instagram feeds. Oh yeah, and I'd seen it a while back, like maybe a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, oh, I'd check it up on the site. So I went to to the Games Workshop website to see what shiny things I might possibly hate myself for later on when I buy them and leave them in a big pile of unpainted things for months on end. <laughs> um, and there they were. And they were just sitting there, having a look at the uh, the setups. And there are like different heads to it, and there's uh, different hat. There's a, you know how on one of them there's a pointy hat. Um, yeah. Like, like it's got a mechanical hand instead of like a human one. Oh yeah. So so you've got some cybernetics in there as well now on the actual standard troops. Sweet. Good. And I believe, if I am correct. That the squad on the, pardon me, on the on the actual <laughs> Games Workshop site. Sorry about that. That caught me on a word. It snuck up on me, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it was like twenty two pound fifty for a squad. Is that more or the pretty much the same as uh, what current squad's going for? Hey, well, it's it is the current squad now. Right. So. Well, yeah, if, it's, if there's no price increase, I'm happy with that. Happy enough, anyway. I still think it's a bit overpriced, but that's me. Well, true. Uh, but if, if you can take a bit of time, once it's, once it's there, check, check your third-party suppliers. See what yeah. they have to give. Say what they say. See what they have to give. Shit, I keep forgetting that the belt needs to go uh, brown as well. Is that the the straps on the the chest piece? Yeah, around the, around the back. But yeah, I tended to forget all of those all all the bloody time. I'm sitting there painting. I'm like, sure, I've missed something. And then I look at them and I see that they're painting. I'm like, oh, but we know on this channel and on my own that I am. Consistently missing things, so it's all good. Yeah, well, at least you find them and repair them, good. Whereas me, I just, I end up not finding them until like weeks later, and then just think, ah, oh, fuck it, no one cares. Oh, well. 
No one gives a shit. But I care. Ding dong. You, well, I care as well, which is why I fixed them. Yes. <laughs> Sit there and you're like, something's not right with that model. Doc, I can't see what's not right with that model, but something's not right with it. <laughs> Hang you on. Spend it, you spend about 20 minutes just staring at the thing from every possible angle, and then you're like, um, as you hmm. realize it's just one tiny bit yeah. that you haven't painted, like a belt pouch or, you know, one side of a pistol, which I realize I did on one of the things. And they're, they're recently painted for the um, for the Space Marine Primaris. As I painted everything up and I was like, yay! And then I looked and one half of the ball that was silver and the other half was black. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> to put it into context, all of it should have been black. Uh, you, got one, uh, you got a scheme where you got black bolters. Yep. Instead of my setup that I've got for my Ultramarines, the which has like a red bolt gun. Which is the way Ultramarines should be. It's like the, the older setup. Um, I have the the black bolt gun cowlings that I've seen for the, the other stuff. I mean, my Imperial Fists have got black bolters, but... I think that's part of their um, actual... Yeah, that, that, that's that's Shut how up. it should be. Whereas, you know, Ultramarines should have red bolters. Just like Dark Angels. Mm hmm. Sort of red gun cowlings. He's got covered in bells. Right. Though it does look quite bright here. It's going a little bit dark now, so I'm going to go and quickly do the blinds oh. and uh, turn the light on. Indeedy doody. Right. Switch out for this. Ooh! Careful. Oh, small dog. Small dog, scratchy. Anyway, I haven't actually seen any more when it comes to the orcs just yet. So I need to have a look on the site and see if I, any of the orcs have actually Is that the orc models? Yeah. I, I, I haven't seen anything fresh other than like some more weird boys, which they've now called were boys, I believe. Hmm. I wonder why. Probably copyrightable. Yep. I think that is exactly it. It's e more easily copyrightable. No, weird boys. What? The, um... I haven't actually checked to see if there are any additional sort of models out for them yet. They will come. They will. I know this. Probably not... Oh, I've missed the face. Ha! <laughs> Here we go, Badger. Right there. Right there. Missed the goddamn fucking skeleton face. Bow, 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 bow. I knew there was one of them. Always one. Has anybody ever... Has anybody seen that meme where it's essentially just the... the possum sticking out of a tree, screeching at something, and... All it's got is how I feel today, and there's just the entire <laughs> picture is covered with... Ah! <laughs> is that how you feel right now? That moment passes me right now, this particular part in time. <laughs> that is how I feel. Because it's a stupid mistake that I made. I need to write in this bloody spooky boy's insides. Mistakes are made to be corrected. You should never make the mistakes in the first place. Must be perfect. 
Mistakes are life's way of teaching you things. Mistakes are life's way of saying, guess what? You think you're good, but you're actually stupid. <laughs> Here is why you're stupid. Now fix being stupid. And some people can go, yeah, okay, sure, I'll, I'll fix being stupid. But they do the good thing, but they fix being stupid. And some people go, no! No! I'm not stupid! And then continue being stupid. In fact, ramp it up by a factor of 10. Yeah. Uh, they were 100% more stupid than they ever could. Yeah. It's a talent. An amazing talent. Some people Somehow do you just... can be even more dumb. Even more dumb. Even more dumb than dumb. But what amuses me even more is that the point in time when somebody's stupidity rolls all the way around 360 and becomes genius again where they do something so stupid that it works <laughs> but because it works you know it, it it's amazing that's the human version of um of making something orky yes it's like you have been so dumb that you've been granted one reprieve And we will not punish you for your stupidity, because somehow this stupidity is very inventive. So, here is your biscuit. Now go sit in the corner for a while and think about what you did. <laughs> uh, I think um, I think Luke's about to bark at Bear because he's hassling him. So apologies if that happens, everyone. If, if there is some roofs and woofs. Yes. Well, just before when you stood up there, Dave, and uh, gave Luke. A scratch. Puppy boys give the new the evils. Oh yeah, she hates that. Don't you, puppy? She does. <laughs> she was like wagging her tail and everything. You were like, yeah, this is going to be great. And then you walked over and scratched him. And she was like, how what dare even? you? What even? Once I've got rid of this paint, I'll give I'll give puppy some fosses. She can have some fosses. And then instantly Bear will walk over and be like, hello. That's, See you are giving fusses. Happen. It's gonna happen. I also like fusses. Yeah. I think Bear's bored. <coughs> yeah, you can hear him now. I'd like to just tell him, bugger off. I'm trying to have a nap. Leave me alone. Sleeping. Okay. Right. Ooh. Are you going to be buying the potential remake slash reboot of Dead Space? I have yet to see what the potential remake slash reboot of Dead Space looks like first. Hmm. So, honestly, when it comes to that game... Yeah. It took me so long to play it because I was creeped out simply by the creepy version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on the um, on the menu screen. That, nice. That's an honest truth. I was so unnerved by that that it took me forever <laughs> just to start the game. Until. Let alone actually, once I was in the game, yeah, jump, jump scares everywhere and panic fire and then God knows what else, but I sort of distract myself with the the terror of running away from the the unkillable creature and just completely spazzing out firing and cutting things arms off do you have any issues buying it off a company that um basically destroyed the original developers and the series as a whole i don't know how they're going to be changing it though well so it, it, basically, even if it's even if the game is fantastic, do you not have a problem with buying a game off that company, I, I especially a game of that series? Right. the The biggest clincher for the whole thing, and yes, I would have an issue with grabbing it 
purely for the fact that the the company is dog shit mm -hmm. for the way it treats every bloody developer that it's ever owned. Yeah. But it's like this is like the same argument of saying, you know, this this musician who's amazing does fantastic work, and then you find out that he's a complete dickhead. Well, cough cough, Michael Jackson argument. Cough cough. I don't even think it's that. I don't. I don't think that's the comparable argument. The comparable argument is they make a really really good. They made really really good spectacular music and entertainment, but then they turned out to be a complete knobhead. Hmm. Okay, this is sort of like if right. It's basically imagine a child made some fantastic music, and Michael Jackson stole that music off them, killed the child, and then started selling the child's music and making money off it. That is mm. that's the only way that that analogy would work. Yeah, if you put it like that, then I probably probably wouldn't buy it. But the the big thing that I'm look, that I'm looking at for mostly is if they keep the spirit of the game without crushing transactions into it. Well, because if the game is essentially just a repolish of the original, um, with all the flavor, all the horror. You know the the same sort of story thing, just, literally just a big old HD remake where they they fix a lot of the glitchy bits and mm -hmm. uh, and and polish the look of the thing. Yeah, I'd be okay to to buy it, not at full price. It would be a sales purchase, but I would still probably buy it. I would say if you are interested in playing that game, pirate it. Yar. Yar. Exactly. Mate. Don't give EA any of your money for Dead Space because the Dead the Dead Space was killed by EA. It already exists. Mm-hmm. Dead, Dead Space exists in a better format, and that is the original format. Yeah, but don't buy that game because Visceral's not getting any money. I but... can't remember what Visceral is doing. They're doing their own sort of. Yeah, it's a what is the uh, in... Indigo Prophecy? I think it's called. Mm. I'm not sure I can't remember. I did see it recently and it just completely blanked out of my skull. Yeah, it's basically a, know... a spiritual successor and that looks good. And buy that. Yeah, I, I want to have a look at that. I want to see that. I'll probably end up seeing it when Rich gets it. When War Rich acquires it. Almost certainly, yes. And then I'll watch him play it and I'll watch him jump and I'll be like hmm maybe I should have a go with this and then I will play it and then I will shit my pants the indigo prophecy is what Fahrenheit was called ah what what am I talking about it's it's something along those lines also welcome what War Warwick oh the Castillo project oh, he's already he's put it in there uh, oh the Callisto project Callisto yes yeah. that's what it is it's the one in the prison with all the the horrible weird twisty creatures um, that looks easy. Absolutely amazing. I wouldn't mind getting hold of that. Yeah. Hello, Rich. How are you this uh, evening? Have you recovered you from just... your rather entertaining stream earlier? <laughs> at, at, at a certain point, I just sort of was like, I'm, I'm supposed to be working here, but this is... I can't look away. There's voices. It's like a slow car crash. Yeah. With amazing slow car crash. <laughs> He's alright. He's been lurky lurky. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate the lurk, man. I don't think my viewers counts um, working at the moment because I'm pretty sure that both yourself, uh, yourself and Badger were here and I've got the stream up myself so I can monitor chat. Yeah, and it, it continuously says that it's got three people in it and sure that there's Snoogler who yeah. or Richard and you in it. So that's that's already four things. Oh wait until tomorrow it's gonna to be much better. Well tomorrow I'm gonna be in actually in the office so I won't be able to watch it tomorrow so I'll have to catch you VOD afterwards. Oh, <gasps> well he's already been listening to him still. 
as well. Yeah. And maybe you can you can understand when you've been doing the things. Uh, Pardon me. I'm very windy today. You are. Uh, what we meant by Miss Piggy, because seriously, your your Monica voice. Uh mm-hmm. huh. Even though you try to put on a very good British accent, like a, a Queen's English, for her, does sound like Miss Piggy. <laughs> and unfortunately, I could never, since it's Twitch, I could never link that video of Kevin Frog losing his shit. Where he's like, <laughs> yeah! He put his arms flailing. But that needs to be an animated um, emote that you have. Yes. Right, I am going to start focusing on half the sprue now. Just so you can get some dudes done? Yeah. Just so I can get some things done. Wait, you focus on the, the sergeant, the, the special weapons guy, the voxcaster. Yeah. And so I've got, got this sprue here, which is the... Uh, so this got the most heads done. Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong uh, side. There you go. Most head. Most head. Most head, Newman. Me. Bloody hell, you are gassy. Today. Well, I did have some drinks last night. Oh, hello. Yes, I did. With, with the folks out at the Das Cabage. Nice. And when the parents went home, I went to the next pub oh. and had some rums. A little badger pub crawl there. Well, it, essentially, I there were two pubs which I would really go to in the Bedlington. Uh, one is called the Market Tavern, which, as you may guess, is in the marketplace. And the other one is called the Northumberland Arms, which is... Pretty much right next to it. It's just across the road. Yeah. Essentially. And it has a very, very <clears throat> nice landlady called Fee. And but it's just a really nice place to be. It's, nice. it's almost like an it's almost like an old man's pub, essentially. We're one step away from an old man's pub. I I love a good old man's pub, me. So all the good things. And it's got a good batch of locals. Yeah. Who were always fun to talk to. Excellent. So you had a good time then? Well, the thing is, it's it. I've been to it so many times that when I walk through the door, they go, cracking and rum. Well, I'm sorry, cracking and coke, and I'm like, yep. Cracking and rum. <laughs> rum crackin and, and more and rum, rum, please. Rum with more rum on top of it, please. To be honest, I'm at, I'm at a stage where I might try that at some point. <laughs> Mix all of the rums, please. A shot of each rum and then just top it off. Top it off with a shot of Diet Coke. Because yes. I've got to look after my um, Look after my your diabetes, figure. of course. It's not my figure, it's my diabetes. Yeah. And uh, and essentially, rum is, is, is just all molasses and sugar. It's about... Actually, spirits are really, really good for diabetics. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at what what goes into making rum. Yes, rum is essentially distilled sugar cane. Yes. It's like, hmm. It's technically it's all made of sugar. Yeah, several but it's pounds, really, really good. Several pounds of molasses. But it's really good because all of that sugar is turned into alcohol. I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry. I'm only destroying my liver. <laughs> Which in, in essence is still not the best thing, but There are worse the, things to destroy. If you want the actual reasons behind why spirits are better for diabetics than things like strong ales and, you know, alcohol pops and things. As it's all down to the alcoholic percentage. Because the stronger the alcoholic percentage is, the more that it means that your liver tries to work dealing with the alcohol. 
And when it's dealing with the alcohol, it's not actually releasing glucose into your system. Which is one another reason why you just get so horrifically hungover. Yeah. Is because your liver is essentially switching off the glucose production. Which means it's not giving you a constant supply of glucose into your bloodstream. Uh, to deal with the alcohol that it's trying to, you know, not poison itself with. All oh, right. So there you go. It's a biology so, there. So one one reason why spirits are better for you than actual ales, which are all deliciously hoppy and, and carbohydrate-y and all that stuff is. Because essentially you're putting your liver into panic mode. You, but you're putting your liver into, you know, deal with the poison rather than, you know, release the energy source. It's like, I have to deal with this, I can't be bothered to deal with that, so I'm shutting off, like, letting out my energy stores. And you can deal with just the sugar that goes straight into your system, rather than I am now letting out all of the sugar constantly plus having more put on top of it. Which is another reason why you've got to be very, very careful when drinking spirits uh, and taking insulin at the same time. Because you have to compensate for any of the insulin that you do take by reducing the amount of insulin you take. Because your body is like always producing glucose in your blood from your liver, but you just can't deal with it as much when when you don't produce normal insulin so if you actually stab yourself let's say let's say i would need to take about 15 units of insulin if i was drinking heavily which i might have been last night when it comes to drinking the rums i would essentially be better off giving myself maybe about 10 to compensate for the fact that my body is not actually giving me glucose. So I'm, I'm giving myself insulin to compensate for the food that I put in rather than the food I put in plus the stuff that my body is constantly producing. It's not moderately confusing at the same time as being like simple to try and just Ah, brain. <laughs> yes, it's it's weird how it works. Aye. But when you think about it, it is also simple when you understand it. And there's Dr. Birch's biology corner, everybody. For the moment, at least. <laughs> Oh man, I much prefer painting bigger models, you know, it's just, uh, or at least painted one-offs. Yeah, big, big one-off models being that you've sort of got a lot of flat areas to work with. Um, honestly, there's not, with, with what you painted beforehand, the big broadside, there's not as much detail to go into the model. So you don't need to like really focus your brain on it. If you'd been painting something like uh, a demon prince or a tyranid, you might have had a, you might have changed your your outlook on that, Dave. Because there's a lot more fiddly detail, things like veins and yeah, and pipework and God knows what else. Stick them up. Mu musculature. That is a, that is actually a really nice model. And a really nice paint job that you've got on it too. Oh. Just autofocus again. There I did see I did see your very, very fine um army that you had posted upon the Oh yeah, that's the Instagram. That's the Imperial Guard I've got so far. It's looking really good to see that you've actually I know that you haven't done all of it, but I see that you've got most of that sentinel. Yeah, 
there's a few bits and pieces that need doing. Like I've, the last cannon hasn't got um, mechanical standard grey on it. It's it's just black. And the chainsaw. Yeah. That you have still needs just a couple of little bits of touch up. There's there's Better bits that, there's bits and pieces on the sense of what need doing still, but it's probably mm -hmm. only what an hour worth of like just tidying right. up. I'd you say. know what it's gonna you know what it's gonna be. It's what? gonna be when you have stuck all of your Imperial Guard to next week. When you've stuck all those together, then you move on to your sentinel and you finish up the touch ups. That's what it's gonna be. Probably. You'll be like, ah, oh, I finished all of my Imperial Guard. Well, no, not all of the Imperial Guard, but at least that one squad. Yeah, this one squad. I've still got another another squad and a command squad to do. And a tank. And another tank, yeah. And a commissar, which I found behind me monitor. Fabulous. Yeah. Just got to remember he's there. <laughs> As you, as you sit there next week and be like, I had something else. There yeah. was something else. Where is that thing? Because I'll have certainly <laughs> forgotten about it. Yeah, I might do a commissar next week if I um, if I haven't finished these. If I have finished these even. Or it might be the week after. And then I might start putting some uh, Imperial Fists on. Oh, no! Fuck. Did you actually go over some cloth? Mm hmm Did you touch cloth today? I did. It's not coming off either. Coming off and off. I'll have to just go back over it again. Well, if you didn't have any of the, the stripes on it. Yeah, I didn't. So I suppose I could just uh, cover it in a stripe colour. It's it's a it's a simple thing to fix that. Yeah. I think the stripes are the last thing I do before uh, sticking together. I've still got some leather to do actually on these models. God, I'm so shake. Oh no! Do you need your need uh, to... insulin? I might need to grab a biscuit roll, a medicinal cake. That's what I'll need to grab. Medicinal cake. That's what I refer to it as. It's medicinal cake because when I'm when I start to shake like this, it means that I have too little sugar in my system. Ah, well, you go do that like almost immediately, sir. No, I I just need to. We wouldn't want you collapsing on us. Oh, oh don't worry. I, I I'm not dumb enough to force this to such a stage where I'd pass out on the desk. Yeah, your body gives you plenty of warning. It does, and this is what the shakes are. Even the shakes are like, oh, okay, okay, maybe, just maybe, things are getting a bit spicy, Badger. Can you please fix Feed us it? cake, feed us cake, feed us cake. Shake, 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 like, feed us cake. It's like, I need the sugars, please. Yes. Actually, you keep a bottle of uh, Shaky Jake near you. Well, you technically, one of the actual standard things that is mentioned to you by the nurses and that who deal with you when you first get diagnosed and that as they go keep either like some dextrose tablets with you or a chocolate bar with you or a bottle of Lucozade. Now that's changed because Lucozade have by law had to reduce the amount of sugar in their drink. Okay. Because obviously Lucozade was essentially a diet energy drink, really. It didn't have all the caffeine, it just had the sugar. Yeah. Um, and since everything has to create things with less sugar in now, for for healthy reasons... So basically, Lucozade is pointless now. Lu no, Lucozade, it, it used to be a case that you'd have to take maybe a couple of mouthfuls of Lucozade and you'd be fine. But now you'd have to neck the bottle. Which is... Mm, well, honestly, I can't neck a bottle of Lucozade. But... Yeah, obviously you've got to like, essentially drink the entire bottle of Lucozade before it, it works. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely neck a whole bottle of Lucozade. Now, if, if I had to get, like, if I just had, like, a little tin of energy drink, yeah, that that would be fine, but not everybody carries small tins of energy drink. Uh, so, right, I'm going to go grab myself something. I shall be back. You shortly. do that. 
whilst I resume this. So what I've got left to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I've done the cloth. I've done the the the, the lever on the shoes. I've done the lever on the uh, on the belts on the torsos. There is a bit of lever on the top of the torso. Look at that lever strap there. Once I've done the armor, I'm going to just quickly do them. Um, I need to do the uh, the bolt gun metal on the torsos and the guns, and then. I need to do the helmets as well on the heads. So yeah, there's plenty to do. <laughs> plenty to do. We'll get there. We will. If you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, John. But AIDS. Get some of that delicious biscuity goodness in the bit. And I, I just realised as I walked through into the kitchen that I had made myself some, like... Was it kettle noodles, essentially, some oil some, in the cup noodles? Yeah, some pot and noodles. I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten it, and it's just sitting here, and it's probably cold by now. But that's okay. Oh, cold noodles, man! It's not cool, man. It is cool. Oh, it is cool. Oh, come on! I walked into that one. Just eat my most good here. Hopefully, not too loudly. I'll try. Oh. I could do with being a bit more careful with this. Um. A lot of paint on this brush. So, the lid to me pop has just escaped. You know when you go to twist it back on and it doesn't quite twist and it just rolls off the side of the. Ah, uh, so. It's gone. Well, oh, well, oh, no, no, it hasn't. Ah, uh -huh. found it. Yep. Oh. <clears throat> it's all so good. The lid is back on, which means there is no spillage risk if I should accidentally knock my bottle over. Come on, this is you. There's always a spillage risk. Um, it's true. <laughs> it's, very, it's very true, ladies and gentlemen. I, I am a spillage risk. Badger is the enemy of pop drinks. The enemy of fizzy pop. As soon as he goes near them, they might spill and they immediately stop being fizzy. Yeah, they, they go flat. I... I <laughs> Flat on contact, I am probably a really, really shit supervillain. <laughs> Flat man. I, I refer to myself as the decarbonator. <laughs> Flat man. Na, 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 But I never thought about Flat man. So thank you for that, Dave. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. Okay, that's all of them done. I need to get the rest of these torsos done. Shader and wash time. Hooray! Bump, 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 bump. I'm a long way off that point, to be honest. Well, this is only for like the first four of these guys, so. Yeah. Still have a long way off actually completing them. Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got um, a long way to, to even just doing these five. And I have decided I'm going to try and get these uh, these five models done by the end of the stream. Excellent. Or at least stuck together. And then I can tidy the rest of them up next time. Rocky. Go 
got to remember there's that one that I haven't done, otherwise I'll forget about it and once I've stuck it together I'll be like, oh, something doesn't look right there and the whole back of a torso won't have been painted. At the moment I've got to be careful because even though I'm washing things, I'm having to use three different coloured washers. Huh? So I have to make sure that I don't wash over a different area by accident. Why? Why do you have to use three different ones? Because I need to use the the blue wash, the Dragonhoff nightshade, to darken down the blue areas and the, the spooky wispy cloth, uh, as well as do the skin. Hmm. Before I do the um, the dry brush over the skin. Yeah. I need to do uh, null oil for the for some of the stone work and the metal work. Uh, and then I, and then I have to use Agrax Earthshade for the wood. So Fair enough. Know, the wood and the metal on uh, the I mean there are uh, different colours on these on these models that could probably do with different colour washes, but I've always just used Null Oil for no reason. Null no, Oil's no, a nice coverall. Yeah. I might try Agrax Earth Shade now that I've got a I've got a part of it. Just on the faces. It gives you a bit more of a a dirty sort of dusty kind of yeah. thing. Which, but if you go over the faces, it's it's all right for the faces. I did that before I even got hold of the the flesh colours. Oh, that was nice. Oh, bloody hell! Big stretch. Uh, yeah, big stretches are good. Ooh. Oh, I got some uh, some new dice for D and D last week. You mentioned that you'd gotten yourself some actual dice to play yeah. with because so you was... were doing, pretty much been playing with the the online dice roll, and you're like, I didn't really have any dice left from. Well, I, I had dice, games. but it's I've just got like a pot of dice, and they're all just like it's just like a a mix oh, match. Yeah, I've got like I've got most of two sets there, an orange and a red one, but like. Just like that, um, a couple of dice have gone missing. Here and there. Flying out of D10 your hand. D10 just buggered off. Go back on my AU. Right, where, where, where did I put this splodge? There it is. Whoop. Okay. I need the, uh, the flame of pack backpack on this. Because I've got the flamer in this squad. Yeah. Flamers are actually really, really good in this this edition. Are they now? Cool. It's because they have the automatically hits. All oh, right. Sweet. A lot of the the damage that you get comes purely from like weight of weight of hits. Yeah. Rather than you know. Actual strong strikes. Um, dogs are trying to get my attention. Oh, they've gone. Bears in a playful mood. Which you never know really means that Luke isn't. Yeah, I mean, Luke just doesn't like. Looks just like fun. They only like he's spawn just, on his terms. He's just an old grumpy guy. <laughs> yeah. He's allowed to be an old grumpy man. He's a wizard, Harry. You're a lizard, Harry. Hmm. 
think that's all the torso is done. I'll just do a double check it. Yes, it is. Nice. Let's get the grenades done. Ah, oh, right. Okay, done with the blue. Whip boot is no oil. Fwaw. Whip it out. I the, the helmet. Brushed, properly washed. Yeah. Thank you, Bear. That's really interesting. We appreciate all you do, Bear. <laughs> oh, dear. Poor Bear. He's so misunderstood. Okay, let's go try and get his helmet painted without painting too much of the of the head. Watching the video beforehand. Oh yeah. And essentially, this is how my husky wakes up my sister, and the oh. dog is essentially just sitting behind and bam the shit out of her with a pause, and you can hear her trying not to like want to get out of bed but you can just hear us slowly going like it oh it says this dog's just like no nope, wake up wake up wake up wake up wake up today <laughs> is the day to wake up yeah so, properly giving it whapping the shit out of her oh, bear sleeps downstairs for us because it's too hot for him upstairs so when we get when we get up in the morning he's he, there yeah he rolls on his back Ready for some belly rubs. So, did it, okay, I stuck downstairs. Am I good? Are we good? <laughs> right, I think that's Voxcaster helmet done. I need another blob of paint. Bloody hell. Tell you what, this mechanical oh. standard grey doesn't go very far, man. Lovely colour, but just the paint dries up really quickly. I kind of find that. Okay, on there. We should be good. And try and brush off properly again. Agrich, that's shading. Yep. Right, after I've done this, I'm going to start doing the guns. Yeah, just just looking at what I'm painting at the moment. Uh, these last four big guys. I'm oh, sorry, these four big guys. With the exception of one big executioner model. Yeah. Which I've already painted one, and I'll bring him down to show shortly. Sweet. Um, it's just troops, essentially. It's just troops that I need to paint to finish off this this part of the commission. Yes, yeah, so Every, you've got... everything else is done of these guys. You've done all the interesting stuff, and now it's just the boring bits. Didn't really say it's boring bits. <laughs> I'm painting Imperial Guard right now. I can say it's boring bits. Because you're, you're painting the bulk of your own, essentially. Pretty much. The biggest chunguses. You defend the Imperium with their life. Yeah. The Operation Human Shield protects our tanks and planes, too. It's so true. Yeah. I think there might be like a quote in the Imperial Infantry Primer. Oh yes. Which, which is essentially like you you may kill me, but 
we will like crush you the, with the weight of our dead bodies or something like that because there's like for every one of us that you kill there's like a hundred more who takes my place yeah I'll, wh- I'll, uh, I'll whip out the primer in a sec and it, it's just that it's just the whole thing that even the guardsmen who work on the front lines know for a fact that they're fodder yeah they're gonna die but probably they understand that they are fodder in service to the emperor therefore their sacrifice extends the life of the imperium and their way of life but that's true of any war basically the standard spots are always the fodder yeah. And they know. Oh, it. Just ch- chuckling at something that I remembered. I was going to say, that's a bit morbid. <laughs> um, just. Uh, it's like a picture of like a newborn baby with his sort of like really fed up looking face. <laughs> and it's sort of like, finally, I've been reincarnated into a different universe. I hope it's Star Trek. And it's like, this is the 41st millennium when it's green <laughs> guy inside. It just slowly zooms in every picture as it's like going down the whole 40k blurb. They're just getting closer and closer to this head up face and, it, and right at the end it's just like... Oh shit. It's like, I have been born into the worst science fiction universe. <laughs> I am... Um, human what? life is cheap. Yeah, I watched a video um, yesterday where it was talking about how uh, Star Trek is the only science fiction that has hope. Because it's the only science fiction universe in which we didn't leave the planet because it was on fire. Mm. Um, We fixed the problems before leaving, apparently. So, there you go. Apparently Star Trek is the only, um, you know science fiction where the earth survives with a bright future yeah i mean the earth survives in 40k it's just does it though well i mean yes it does a horrific the, throne, waste. the throne of terror but you wouldn't want to live there it's essentially a poisoned rock yeah Whereas in Star Trek, apparently they managed to um, to fix, fix the problem. Give all the good things. Yeah. Repair it from what we've done to it. Lapsing Imperial. I suppose you, that there is also hope in Red Dwarf in that there's no way to know whether or not the... Uh, the Earth uh, is destroyed or not. Yeah. Because we, de- you know, they never, they never make it back. And no, I don't count the newer series as. They never make it back. There was that back to earth thing. Um, but the only, but that, was that, say, was, the that only was that was time actually, travel. Yeah, the only time they actually made it back, they were time traveling in a smart car. Yeah. Which I think, in its own way, was quite funny, actually. Yeah, I just thought it was really sad. Honestly, it just made me feel bad that there was not more actual actual uh, red We're dwarf. Lister. Lister met up with Great Charles on the set of Coronation Street. Yeah. <laughs> See, I always like that kind of thing. And it must be so, so jarring for the actor to essentially have to talk to himself. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's not talking to himself. He's just saying one set of lines off off a script and then saying the other set of lines. I think they have to have like a sort of a a stand-in so a dude... 
or like a cardboard cutout or something. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll be a stunt double that they film from the back, probably. Blot out and just have his face, like, stuck to him. Like a, a cardboard cutout of his face, and it's just... Now you see, that'd be weird. And I don't think that they'd do, they'd do that. I don't think they need to. I think that's how they used to do it. They would have, like, a dude in a, a motion capture suit that could easily be green-screened out with, like, a mask on. Which was essentially their face. I mean, um, they don't even need to do it. They, they, you just film the same scene twice with the guy in two different places, and they just, you know, put the yeah, so overlay the film. It's, it's it's not that hard. Right. Dang God. Ding dong indeed. What have I got to do? What? What have I got to do? We have the flesh. What I? Oh no! Wait! No! No! That does not come first. This red comes first because we all have a edging to their cowl. Uh, Jing. But I'm tish. Just gonna do a few of these. Yeah, I've got the uh, the pauldrons to do, and the guns, and then I can start doing the uh, the stripes on the arm on the on the cloth. Nice. And then I can start sticking some boys together. Oh no, I've got the uh, lead belch to do as well. <laughs> yeah, there's a fair bit left to do. Who knows? But you know, this is a nice, a peaceful stream. It is. I'm thoroughly enjoying it, as always. Hi. We have a nice chill time. Ooh, bloody hell. Police are around, apparently. Coming to arrest me. For being too sexy. <laughs> oh, apparently Luke's been locked in here in this room. Probably had his uh, had a chew, and his mum's locked him in, so that the other dogs don't disturb him. It's gonna let him out. Wait for me. Back to normal. Yeah. <coughs> Mechanical standard grey man, it dries up so friggin' quickly, it's not even funny. to go. Mm, so, so much annoying little fiddly bits. Yeah. 
and they're stuck together these imperial guard models look quite nice but they're basically all fiddly bits I think if you were going for like a standard like Cadian colour scheme it'd be fine but since you've gone for a, a bunch of ice world stripey boys to be, to be honest if you <sighs> didn't if you didn't have to do the stripes on your guys and it was just the light grey cloth work yeah I think you wouldn't have as much issue either to be honest true but I've started so I've got to, I've got to do it now you do have to do it you gotta do it right mm. that is a question Mm -hmm. If you were in charge of making a 40k like video game, who and, and you had to approach an artist or a band to do the, uh, the soundtrack, who would you choose and why? Mm -hmm. Now that is a bit difficult. Though I would technically be very, very tempted to just ask either Audio Machine or Two Steps From Hell. Mm. Because both of those artists already do a lot of big sort of orchestral music for yeah. games, and, games and videos and things like that. You know, when you hear like a, a bloody advert for gambling for football and it's got that super epic yeah. music in the background, that is likely to be either like Audio Machine or Two Steps From Hell uh, because they do those big, big epic music, um, big symphonies and things like that. So mm. to, sort of get the, to get the grandeur. Yeah. That the forty K universe tends to, to roll with. Like even it's it's a passive greatness. And like large open spaces that that I think they would work the best for it. Okay. Because they already know how to sort of do big big sort of like music as such. Nice. I I would like I would like to ask two artists to work together. I would quite like. In fact, no, I'll get, I'll get three artists to work together. Oh god, my camera's gone all weird now. Hello, camera. Oh, it, it zoomed in on your finger, Dave. Yeah. He was very, very happy to zoom right in on your finger. There we go, I just started messing with the fuck. There you go, it's sorted now. Oh, but so this is where like a tiny, tiny <laughs> flew, flew past the screen and it just went, I'm going to focus on this now. Yeah, I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask three artists who genu generally work, to get, uh, work alone to w try and work together. There is a guy called Clayton who um, does a band called Cell Dweller, basically. He's basically the main guy. He, he's, he's sort of the Trent Reznor of that group, you know what I mean? He is the guy mm. who does all of the music. It is very over-the-top um, electronic metal, basically. Yeah, uh, I've, I know a bit of cell power. Yeah. And I think I feel yeah. like the electronic feel would go well with you know, science fiction, obviously. He has also got experience doing soundtracks for video games because he did one of the Tomb Raiders. Mm. Um, 
I would ask him to work with Trent Reznor, because I think Trent Reznor would do a good dark feel, you know, and it'd be quite nice and spooky. And then I'd ask them to work with the uh, guy who did the Doom and Doom Eternal soundtracks. So that he c uh, he can do all of the guitar work. Put a lot of sort of action into it. Yeah. So I would like Cell Dweller to produce it. Well, um, Clayton to produce the, the, the thing. Um, and Trent Reznor um, uh, to do the electric stuff on it. And the fellow who does the Doom soundtracks to do all of the guitar work. And I I think that would that would be some fucking cool music right there. I think anyway. Sweet music. Yes. I think. Oh my dude. To be honest, after I've done this dude, it's just a case of touch up and they should be good. Yeah. I am probably not going to get anything stuck together this stream, thinking about it now. <laughs> it's just, uh, there is too much left to do on these mo on the, on this sprue for me to f even consider getting anything stuck together unless I literally no. like painted the stuff I need for one guy at this point just instantly change all priorities just like, one man just get him yeah just get one of them off the sprue you've got this Jeff <laughs> but sir I don't even have a gun there you go I'm just give him a fucking pistol Come on, you bastards. <laughs> Jeff's got this. Instantly goes out into the field. Every dice roll is a six. Oh, my God. Jeff's totally got this. Sick Jeff. That's what, that's what his name is. Sick Jeff, the killer of, like, a whole horde of orcs. He's like, yeah, I'm saving every save. Fuck you guys. Well, saving every save you can save. Well, yeah. What? Oh. Ah. Mortal wounds are a thing. Ah, uh, we promised that we would foss Poppy, didn't we? Hello, Poppy. Look at you. Please don't lick Please everything. Don't, don't lick. Like, I heard you. Yes. Please give me the fusses. <laughs> oh, do you want some fusses as well? Hello. <laughs> oh, no. Don't come on my knee. No, don't lick that. Sorry if her tail is just knocking the microphone constantly. Oh, jeez. Ah, there you go. The was it? No! <laughs> Too much dog! Too much dog! Never enough dog! <laughs> Never enough dog. Hi. Hello. Uh, little bossy dogs. Oh, puppy nearly fell off me then. Right, come on. That's enough now. <laughs> right, now I need to find where the microphone's are. Oh, jeez. Luke totally got in on that action. He did. He did. Right. Back to this. Okay, so we need a carrot bag. I think it's going to be the carrot bag. <sighs> oh, she licked me right on the mouth. It's always grim when that happens. It's like, I know what you've been eating today, dog. Mm. Your own ass! Mostly. <laughs> okay, that's done. 
yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not changing my, my priorities. I am painting everything on this sprue now. I haven't got much more mechanical standard grey to go, I don't think. That's okay. It's correct. So next. I'm making good progress, like on these models. That's that's the thing. If you can get the majority of the models ready within the time frame. Yeah. Which you have done essentially. You practically painted the the whole sprue within two two and a half hours, maybe. Yeah. So I'm just. Um... So your production line painting is actually up to spec. Yeah, I think by the end of next the next stream, I'll have um, the full the full squad pretty much done. Might be a little bit of tidying up to do, but. Not too much. I'm not making that many errors at the minute. Touch wood. That card boots on. What do I need? Black. That's what I need. Yes. And now it is time to start doing all of the the top cloak covering over all of the splatty bits that I made earlier on when I was shading and dry brushing and actually make it look as though the, the cloak that they have wasn't an afterthought. Oh, come on. I might be using a brush that's slightly too big for this job. It's making it a bit difficult to get everywhere I need it to go. Almost, almost. Oh, one more shoulder pad, one more gun, and then half the half the squad have guns. I think it's more than half actually. I've got yeah, I've got the uh, special weapons dude um, and the flamethrower on the sprue as well. I've already got five torsos painted, so. No, you did start focusing on yeah. getting five dudes done. I don't know if it's going to happen before the end of the stream. We've still got 15 minutes, I think. Well, it depends on how far we go, how long we go. We could make it a long one if you wanted, but... Well, I'm almost done with these four here. Yeah, so. unless you wanted to start on something new. Nah. But to be honest, um, no. It's a it's a good it's a good amount of time and uh, I I think I'd need another hour or so and I don't think we can go on till then. The mechanical standard grey is going to be done. Hopefully the um, the lead belcher will be done as well. And then it is literally just striping it up and. Uh, Sticking together. And then obviously washing and tidying. Mm, the usual. The huge. Yeah. Ah, 
Okay, so he's good. Yeah, I'm essentially down to the last bits for this. Nice. Bunch of four. <laughs> You've absolutely trounced me in terms of uh, speed painting. Can't really say that. I've got four dudes and you've got ten. Yeah, for the majority of this stream, I've only been trying to do um, do five. Oh, got an awkward bit here. Long, long, long. Dave, I thought you were painting guard, not orcs. Way. It's a shit joke. Somebody's got to make it. True that. I will take that, boy. Okay. Just double checking that I haven't missed anything there, and then I can start <coughs> doing some grey bits on other stuff. I took a couple of shoulder pads. I'm actually doing models 7, 8, and 9, and 10. I'm not going to finish them all, I'm just going to. Do use, what you can. Yeah, use this paint up, might as well. And. Oh, last one for the night. It's technically, um, I am finishing a squad. Even though I have like four more models of the type. Yeah. But they come in bunches of four. Can they be? Can they come in in larger squads? Most likely. I haven't actually read that much up on the Age of Sigmar army stuff, but I don't think it's going to be too different from. Yeah, I mean they they they, they wrote the rules to be brought into line with the forty uh, k, didn't they? Essentially. It turned it more into a skirmish battle than a big army rumble. I'm sure the Total War people are pissed off at them for that. All I can remember is when they first brought in the Age of Sigmar stuff. When they'd done the end times and essentially stopped fantasy. Guy with a massive, like... And I mean, like, enormous Dark mm. Elf army. Um, threw a hissy fit and burnt it all. That's the elf. Yeah, he essentially stuck it on his barbecue, threw a massive fit because all of his, all of the time and the effort and the, the, the painting that he'd done, the amount of money that he spent on it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, I can't use it, it's just useless. So what's the point? And he just set it on fire. Can understand that. You can, but then you look at it and you think, I've spent all this time on that. You don't just throw that time away. Yeah, it's... but you can understand the, the sentiment of it, at I least. I can understand the rage. The pure, yeah. pure, unadulterated rage that all of this stuff that you've done is essentially for nothing. Pretty much, yeah. Right, Lad Belcher, let's do this. I might actually get a model out, at least like one dude, so that I can have something to show for me, <laughs> for me painting tonight. For the efforts. Yeah, the whole squad will probably be done, finished next week, but 
I might try and get the uh, let's get the flamethrower done shall we Plugged up the holes, haven't I? In the flamethrower. Absolute chaos. Come on. That's not the paint I'm looking at. Some of the lead belcher on this uh, on this pallet looks uh, looks wet, even though it's completely dry. The magic of metallics. Yeah. It's like, oh, hey, this this should be okay still. Oh. <laughs> it is not okay. I wouldn't mind. I've only got one bloody uh, blob of wet paint on there. Not not used the lead belcher yet tonight. So I should know, really, shouldn't I? Okay, not too bad. Flame fry is looking okay now. I just need to get these holes unplugged. <laughs> Ideally, before it starts to dry, I think it's already starting to dry. I need uh, some something very pointy. Keep some uh, push pins. Push pins? What the fuck are they? Thumbtacks. <laughs> just, just need drawing pins. My brain could not actually register that, which, <laughs> uh, so I just ended up going to the American default. Oh no. So sorry guys. I had somebody at work telling, asking me where the the app was on the, the keyboard. And unfortunately the keyboard had defaulted to the American sentence, so it's where the quotation mark is. Uh... And I was like, just do this man, this stupid bloody Yankee keyboard. Oh, you actually know where it is on the keyboard on the Yankee keyboard. Yeah, um, it's as I say, it's where the quotation mark is above oh. the two. It's the shift function. Yeah, I didn't know that. I so know. If you, uh... ever, if you ever type in on a computer and you type at and it doesn't give you the at, you'll know where it is. Yeah. There's. Uh, I I bought a keyboard once and it was in the uh, the German uh, format. Never seen any other format but the the British and the American styles, so I couldn't say what goes where. Yeah. Well, neither can I, which is why I had to return the thing. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand. Hi, I need a new keyboard. I don't understand this one, please. Right. He does not speak the foreign language. Please provide me with a keyboard that is in my own language. Yes, please. The only reason you'd ever want the uh, sort of German layout is to type the word motorhead properly. Right, so is that little... because it's got all the umlauts and things like that? Certainly do. Okay, so a little bit of lead belcher there. Cool beans. Alright, let's uh, paint the backpack thing now. This is your flamethrower guy. Yeah. 
There's fuel tanks. Fuel tanks of justice. Full of burning love. Hmm, burning love. Sisters of Battle would like him. There he is. Skull boys. Two beans and then little side metal strap things. I should probably should have used more metal here because I've probably got more more than just the backpack to do and that has already dried up which is great <laughs> I haven't even done the backpack yet fantastic fantastic oh bloody hell A little bit more, I think. Ooh, ah, uh, just a little bit. Indeed. Ooh, ah, uh, a little bit more. You know what I'm... Is it fighting for? I think, think so. Yeah. You know what I'm fighting for? There we go. Backpack's done. Right, we just need a torso. We'll use this one. Actually, why am I painting the backpack bit? <laughs> no idea why I'm doing that, because there's no need. Because the backpack bit is going to get covered. Paint the belt buckles. Right, I believe. Oh, for the for the start of this, I am done. Very nice, sir. Do you well, want me to move the camera the over to you? Give me a moment. I realise that there is a few little nibbly bits, uh, okay. but they they're all like um, studs. So you get that sorted while I. Uh... Finish using this paint. Okay. That's good. Bit. Get the uh, little uh, bits of fluff around his uh, fluff. Bloody! What am I talking about? The huge. Uh, Little pouches, pouches and stuff. Because uh, you listen to me too much, Dave. You listen to me, and whenever I can't think of a word for something, I'm like, oh, that fuzzy bit. Yeah. Or that fluff right there, or this hooja. <laughs> a hooja what, my, my jig? A hooja, my jigger. A watch my bob. Yeah. Speaking in gnomish, sir. Mmm. Speaking in Gnomish. Okay. And he needs a head as well. I'm going to give him the one that's... Uh, where his helmet's a bit skew -if. Because he's a heavy weapon boy. Well, not heavy weapon boy. A medium weapon boy. Special weapon. Yes, special weapon boy. And he's just simply blown away with the power of his weapon. I think the helmet that you're, you're referring to, isn't that the one with the, the chin strap unlocked? It just looks like a grumpy fuck. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. He's the guy who's had enough of your shit. 
Yeah, and he's gonna burn your ass. He's upgraded from the spicy flashlight. Spicy flashlights. It's still by far the greatest description of the last gun that I've ever heard. <laughs> I need a set of grenades for him as well. He can have these ones. Alright, so I'm going to need to give him... Finally. Finally. I am done. I am done, Mr. Dave. Nice. Right, whilst you uh, show off your your wares, I'll uh, switch over to you. Your camera there. There is Badger's cam. Talk us yep. through it, mate. Right. With these little spooky boys, these are... I've actually got a booklet here. It's the name of these boys. Uh, they are... Grim Gas Reapers, apparently. Uh, I'm not entirely certain exactly what else they do other than use these dirty great scythes to chop your face off. But they are... Zoom in, please, camera. <laughs> I'll just have to deal with that. For who um, really they, nice. They are a bit... They do have a bit of a, a dark coloration to them, so it is difficult to get all of the things... Like the details in that shown. Very and nice. People may, people may have actually noticed that I have a slightly brighter setup at the moment. And that is because today I acquired another light source. Dun, dun, dun. I have Sweet. like a circular selfie light. Yes. It's got three different color variations did, so did you get the same one i did i don't know this right if i turn off my little bendy light first here is the color you can see does it have a hot a warm a cold and a neutral setting it has uh, the white light the yellow white light yeah. and the yellow light you bought the same one i've got 25 squids it wasn't bad was it no, it wasn't. It was very, 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 very good for the price. Yeah. And I'm... it's quite big, actually. Yeah. I, 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 I use it. It's pretty It's pretty nice. It's got its own little tripod and it's got a phone holder on it. Uh, which is why I have, I've got my phone holder there so I can see the chat instead of having <laughs> to stare down at the floor to see the chat. Yes, I have... Provided a much shinier, brighter location for all of my things. Excellent. I know. Uh, I know oh, I know. Uh, Snoogliffin was talking about getting himself a uh, an actual lighting setup so he can join us. Well, again, if he gets if he gets one of these bad boys, should be enough for any desk. Yeah. So I know he was uh, struggling to paint where he was sat when he used to join us. Pretty dark. Yeah, it was a bit. Shade okay. in in the darkness. You just need to do like one little bit there, and then I can do stripes, and it'll be good. All will be. <laughs> Meanwhile. Meanwhile. I'm going to be a terrible human being. And spend about two or three minutes picking all the peas out of my noodle pot. You you do that, sir. Because there is no necessity to have peas or sweet corn in a noodle pot. I mean, I like a bit of sweet corn, me. Yeah, but th this is like two pieces of freeze-dried sweet corn. Yeah, I guess. So fresh sweet corn. Yeah, go for it. Fresh peas, go for it. These sort of like sweet... Sweet. These freeze dried things kind of go a bit. Right, I'm going to get the smallest brush I have. I'm going to get me Fan Rizian and my Slanish. Wherever that's gone. 
flawed memory. Mm. Oh, there it is. Haha. -ha. Wait for it. Oh, yeah, that's just a skeleton face. Okay, I'm just gonna literally just draw very thin little tiger stripes. Oh, fuck Read off, it, reading and looking through these books. And just checking out the uh, the models that I've got left to to do. Oh, I understand now. I understand. What do you understand? Well, when I got this, essentially the the, the whole commission. Yeah. There's one guy who's missing his ass. Okay. Like the back end, the back end of the model is missing, mm. but there's a, a model in the chain rasp horde, which is all the spots, called the Dread Warden, who is essentially the banner bearer. Okay. And he's he's got the same back piece, so I've got a feeling that the back piece that was used on the Dread Warden is the missing back piece that I don't have for the other one. Right. So. That's where it's gone, because I was, I was thinking that it was still in the box, and I was searching for it like a crazy boy. Um, but I know where it's gone now. I know why it's missing. And I've said to the dude anyway, I'll still paint the front end of the the guy with the missing asshole. Just because. But now I can inform them that yo. This is why it's not here. Because it was used for a different variation. Yeah. Okay, tiger stripe there. Ooh. That was a little bit thick, that one. I didn't like that one at all. Okay. These noodles aren't as cold as I thought they were. Yeah. Well, it takes a while for boiling water to go cold, I guess. Okay. Whoop. And then Fenris in grey. Finishes up on that, and then I can start to stick one model together for us. Right, what I'll do. Oh no, I've got to wait until the, the stream is over before I can retrieve my phone from its its place of being. Essentially, my chat box. <laughs> well, I mean, feel free to. Have a look, but yeah, I can mon I can monitor chat for a bit. Oh, it's more a case that it's. I was going to take pictures of things. So. Ah, uh, right, okay. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to detach this from the mounts, which is easy enough. Do do do. Okay. Once this uh, once this paint dries, the stripes do become a lot more visible, which is cool. Uh, right. So, I'm move these guys a bit so I can get some better pictures. Come on, a little bit more paint dried up before I could use it. Pardon? Right. And that is all the various bits of the model that I need to uh, I need to paint, or at least the base coat of them, and I need to stick them. Clip and stick. So let's get one model's worth of uh, sticking ready. So I'm going to just maneuver stuff around. Right. Do, 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 do. Now we should Oof. everything back. Stop it. Yeah. Turn nope. that off. <laughs> and I have the pictures now. Nice. So. If I go into the WhatsApp, 
Da -da 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 -da. Right, so we've got a base. One base. Ooh. Need to grab the grab the the model that I'm using. The legs. This one. Clippity clip. A couple of bidinky donks on the thing as I go through these bad boys. Yeah, you just have to have a quick check to see if you can tidy something up. It's more me sending the things to the to the chat. Um, the, the other chat. For the purposes of pre stream display. So mm -hmm. post post stream display? Yes. Yeah, post stream display, not pre stream. <laughs> pre Okay, it's gonna flatten the bottom of the feet there. Right, get some uh, super glue. Little brushy super glue. I love this thing. It's the best. It's a toasty fire boy. Yep. There he goes. Next, we get the torso off the sprue. I mean, got to get at least one model put together per stream, haven't I? Otherwise, what's the bloody point? Oh, you just take your time. Yeah. Okay. Blob, blob, blob. And then I'm actually going to be careful where I put this because if I put it on too skew, if it just looks weird. Not that the body. Yeah. There you go. Looks fine. I'm going to put the backpack on next because there's a place where the hose clips in. So it's always good to use that as a guide. It also helps when you're actually gluing the arms on. Yeah. Because it's another point of contact. It's another point of contact, Gabner. All right, get a little bit of glue inside the uh, the backpack bit there. Just sort of squidge it on. There we go. Got the camera could do with moving down a tiny, tiny bit there, couldn't it? Your army is looking well and truly, especially now for the Imperial Guard. Well, you're looking at the, uh, the picture I put up before. No, but I can look at it again. <laughs> it's just remembering what it looked like when you uh, set it up. Yeah, I am enjoying it. So I've got, I've got a fair few units now, haven't I? You do. It's, uh... I've got two full squads of Cadian Shock Troops, a uh, command squad. Uh, the command squad's got a Commissar in it. Um, heavy weapons. Yeah, I've got a whole, full heavy weapons squad, a Lehman Ross. A uh, sentinel. That's a little, a little, uh, little scenario sort of army, isn't it? Right there. Yeah. And I've got two more squads, uh, full, two more full squads to go, with another command squad. So I'm gonna have like two squads per command squad. Right. Let's get the gun on first. Gun can go on first. Just gotta make sure that the hose is in there. Make sure the hose are in. Yeah. Because if the hose doesn't, uh, if the hose pops out, it just looks dumb. Okay. Just gotta let let that sort of sit there for a couple of minutes whilst I wait for. 
Let it dry enough. Give it a blow. And that should be fine. Super glue dries real quick. Oh, fucking hell. Speaking of the devil, it's uh, starting to coagulate on the uh, on the brush there. Okay. Maybe we should be able to pop that in. Oh, God. Right. That's supposed to connect there. There we go. So he's on. He's holding up the gun quite nice there. And you just need to put his face on. Like in that movie. Look at the movie face on. <laughs> you beat me to it. I knew where you were coming. <laughs> I knew where you were going. Great minds think alike, Dave. Yeah, man. Okay, so that's clipped. A bit at the top, clip. Ooh. Okay. Tidy the clip at the bottom. There we go. I'm going to have to get rid of this uh, bit of coagulated uh, glue. Because otherwise it's going to result. Oh, that's gone on perfect, that. Happy yes. days. I'm just going to tidy this brush up quick with this bit of kitchen roll. There you go, just make sure the kitchen roll doesn't stick to anything else. Victory! And then I've got one more, well, two more little bits to go on. Some grenades and the satchels and stuff. These are the little flavour pieces that I like to put on. I don't actually think I had that many flavour pieces that I put onto my dudes, but then again I've got like 60 guardsmen Yeah. before the two veteran squads. So all in total I've got like 80 guardsmen. <laughs> well, I like to put the flavour pieces on anyway. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm actually going to fit them on this guy. Let's get the uh, let's get the blade on there at least for him. And then I can think about grenades somewhere else. Okay, let's put you on there. So he stuck to the belt. Stick the grenades on his face, Dave. Ah! Oh, there no, you go. Don't stick the grenades on his face. Well, that little flavour piece there. With his knife. Yeah, and uh, grenades I'll stick to... Just underneath the flame for a bit on his back. Just underneath the flame for a bit on his back. Oh no, it's it's beneath the pipes, so that's gonna be the most awkward place to put any. Yeah. Um does he need grenades is the question. He's a walking grenade. <laughs> yeah, I think he's fine as he is. Don't need grenade. The grenade can go in the uh, in there as a spare bit. Right, which means I can close the glue up. And then I'll just go on to my on to bull, bull cam. Do 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 do. Where's my mouse gone? There it is. Do 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 do. Yeah, and then I can uh, get the old focus controls up and ready to go. Sexy looking boy, there, Dave. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Oof. Not not quite done. Like the the uh, once I've uh, null noiled him. The eyes need need doing. I need a little blob of black on the end of the flamethrower so it looks like an actual gun. There's some tidying up that needs to be done. There's a little bit of shoddy uh, metal work going on there. Um, you, you'll have a check of that after you put the null oil down. So. I, I, I tend to try and tidy it up before I put the uh, the null oil on and then just highlight afterwards. Yes. Yeah, there, there he is. Al Flamer Boy. Glorious. I'm in a flame. And you've almost got the other nine dudes ready to go anyway. So. Yeah. So, bring the camera up back up to me. And we are going to say thank you so much for being here, everyone. Um, in a blast. What? 
It's been a blast. It certainly has, yes. So, I'm going to put the, uh, the theme song on. <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Badger, tell us about your channel. What can we expect to see from you? Well, you can catch me on Thursdays at 12pm GMT in my own little place where I do traditional painting. Not only do I do Age of Sigmar stuff, I do 40k stuff, and I do other board games like the Resident Evil 2, Astrophobia, uh, Zombicide, Prison Break, and many, many others. Uh, you can catch me there for my own little painting goodness. That is quite a power badger. Yes, it is. Um... On this channel, um, next thing you're going to see here is a multiplayer stream on Wednesday. And uh, Oski's decided he wants to come and say hello. Hello there. He <laughs> probably gave you the side eye there. Yeah. Um, on Saturday and Sunday this week. Do you mind? On Saturday and Sunday this week, we are going to be doing uh, more Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines. So that'll be fun for us. Uh, I'm going to start doing Let's Plays, um, just just one Let's Play at a time. Um, and I'll be doing all my weekend streams doing that one game. So, yeah, hopefully we'll make some, some more progress with that. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for, for being here. You can follow us on all of the things, all of the things uh, over there on the right. And uh, we will see you next time. Toodles. Ta-ra.